Hello and welcome everybody to this week's video where I want to talk about sensitivity in video games. I'll be talking about both mouse and keyboard and controller, so neither group is going to be left out. We'll talk about what's in general the best, what's bad, and all that different stuff. And I'm not an expert in this field by any means, I'm just going to give the advice that I know to give. But anyways, if you guys like me or my videos, remember to subscribe to the channel and click all the links down in the description below. But other than that, let's get started. So first up we'll do controller since it's a bit simpler and quicker. I'll give you the timestamp for the beginning of the mouse and keyboard section right here-ish. So you guys can just skip ahead to that if you want. But anyways, controller sensitivity is pretty easy to understand. So essentially, the higher you sen your sense, the faster you can move your camera in the game. For example, this is a 360 turn on 3 sensitivity in Titanfall 2. And this is a 360 turn on 8 sensitivity in Titanfall 2. As you can see, it was much faster, but for most people, this, this high of a sense would be too difficult to control. When it comes to controller sensitivity, you want a high enough sense to be able to do at least a full 180 in a reasonable amount of time. But to counter that, you need a low enough sensitivity to be able to track your enemies as they run around. Preferably, you find a nice balance between being able to flick a target on the edge of the screen and being able to track that target as they run across your screen. Also, different video games have different movement speeds and scenarios. You might want to change your sense across different games to keep your flick to tracking balance. There are a few products that claim to help improve your control and, and aim by adding to your controller, but I personally have never used those and I don't think they're really needed for controller. Um, also, most games give you an option to use to control your sense independently on the X and Y axis. So essentially you can look up and down faster than you can look left to right, and the vice versa can be true if you set it up that way. This can be useful if you need a slower sensitivity to track horizontally or in a faster, uh, in a faster sense to uh, be able to flick vertically. This one can also be personal preference, but most of sensitivity is just personal preference. The general beginner settings, if you're new, are as follows. If you want, this, you want the same X and Y sensitivity, for example, a 3X and 3Y, or 4x, 4y, and you want your sense to be somewhat lower. I in general say a lower sense is better for newer players because it's in general easier to track people with a lower sense. Just make sure you don't go so low with the sensitivity that play players move faster than you can move your crosshair. If you have a bit more experience playing games, I would say you can go ahead and find what suits you best and delve into the medium and high sensitivities. In general, I reserve the high sensitivities for people who have extreme pinpoint control with their analog sticks, which is extremely difficult to do. But find what suits you best and run with it. I really wouldn't recommend having different X and Y senses unless you are very experienced and know exactly how those tiny changes will affect your aim. Titanfall 2 has those advanced look controls, but since it's not in the majority of video games, we're also not going to talk about that in this video. Okay, now we're going to get into mouse and keyboard. This section is a bit more in depth since there are a lot more factors when it comes to M and K. When it comes to this, we have to consider mouse weight, mouse pad material, and size, and all this different stuff. So let's dive in. First up, we'll talk about the mouse itself. For FP get FPS games in general, I believe the lighter the mouse, the better. A light mouse makes it so the mouse is more of an extension of your arm and it's a bit more natural to use. This allows you to flick faster and be more accurate in general. If you want light mice recommendations, I have plenty for you. I currently am using a Final Mouse Ultralight Phantom and I have the newest Final Mouse Legendary Mouse on the way soon. If you are somehow able to get your hands on a Final Mouse, I highly recommend doing so. I think they are like the best mouse on the market, but they're but the business model is extremely difficult to actually get your hands on a mouse. So let me give you some recommend recommendations that are actually a bit easier to find. My first suggestion is the Glorious Model O Wireless, a great mouse that a lot of my friends use and works very well. And my last few suggestions are just the lighter Logitech mice. For example, the new uh, Pro X Super Light and the new G Pro are very, very nice. And the last one of these is I'll give the G703, which isn't super light, but it isn't too heavy or uh, either. And I love the shape of that mouse. And that is if you're right-handed. And also some people say about wireless, but wireless has caught up to wired techno technology. And you don't even have to worry about uh, wireless not being good enough. Wireless is perfectly fine nowadays. All right, but next up we have mouse pads. In general, the bigger your mouse pad, the better. 
it gives you more room to fling your mouse around and just operate in general. Most people prefer soft cloth mouse pads that give you good control over your mouse and make it so your mouse stops pretty quickly if you just swipe and let go of your mouse. Hard mouse pads have a lower coefficient of friction, so your mouse skates and glides over it more easily. I personally prefer hard mouse pads, but again, I'm in the minority in that, in that stance. You also can't really find large hard pads since they expect you to be using a faster sense with them. When it comes to both your mouse and your mouse pad, just find what works for you and run with it. Just realize if you switch from a soft pad to a hard pad or a heavy mouse to a light one, it will seem like your sensitivity is faster because it's much easier to move your mouse around. But when it comes to mouse sensitivity, it is largely the same as controller sense. If you want to find out that lets you if you want to find one that lets you be able to flick to people quickly you, and track people well. I like to make sure my sensitivity is fast enough to be able to do a 180 extremely quickly. This gives you the ability to turn on people and dunk on them if they're missing their shots. Once you find a sensitivity that works for you, I highly recommend not changing it. If you're newer to MK and aiming with it, if you're constantly changing your sensitivities because you're not performing well, you'll never get to the point where you can perform well consistently. That's how I got my aim better. I found one sensitivity that I liked and stuck to it for months until I was good with it. Only if you're a very experienced player that knows how to compensate their aim with changing their sensitivity would I say it's okay to change your sense often. Most games will give you independent X and Y axis control just like in controller. I wouldn't say, really recommend it unless you're very experienced. Also, the same as controller, the lower your sense, the easier it is to track targets and you need more pin pinpoint control and steady hands for a high sensitivity. Also, DPI is another topic, the general beginner DPI. Also, what I am currently using is 800 DPI. DPI or dots per inches per inch has a lot of really technical and in-depth stuff, but essentially you can think of it as a multiplayer multi multiplier in the most basic sense. If you use an 800 DPI as your base, someone with 1600 DPI in the same in-game sense would have twice as fast of a sensitivity as you. Again, this is just find a setting that works for you. If you're on PC and really want to experiment a bit with sensitivity and how it affects your aim, I would recommend heading over to Steam, downloading either Kovacs or Aim Labs. This gives you a chance to experiment without having to worry about playing against other people, and you can see your metrics uh, to see how nu numerically uh, your performance. Okay, now we get the general tips roundup. First, you want to find a sensitivity that allows you to both flick to targets quickly and lets you track easily. Don't change senses or have a different X and Y sense unless you're an experienced player that knows how it affects your aims and you can compensate well. Sticking to one sensitivity will allow you to get used to it and build up good muscle memory that will greatly improve your aim. If you want to keep the same sensitivity across multiple games, which I would recommend, that's personally what I do, there are plenty of websites that will do the conversion for you. I would recommend mouse-sensitivity.com, but all you have to do is Google GameX to Game Y sensitivity and click one of the first few links that shows up there. The big rule for sensitivity though is find all the stuff that works for you and use it. Build up your muscle memory and put in the time. There is no one setting that works for everyone. But anyways guys, thanks for watching. I hope I could help you. If you liked the video or if it helped you at all, just remember to like and subscribe. Also click all the links and follow me on all my social media down below. But anyways guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye.